Embiid debuted to the tune of 61 points on 56% shooting. Joel and James also had a plus minus of plus 60. Lost in the shuffle amidst the hype, blossoming sophomore combo guard out of the University of Kentucky and Tyrese Maxey scored a game's second most 28 points as Mad Max benefits tremendously off the Embiid and Harden pairing. Friday night's outing was tied for the third highest rated Sixer game ever including the playoffs, and it was also the most viewed regular season Philly NBA game since 2001. So this video breaks down how the Philadelphia 76ers officially created a monster starting five, and whether or not it's too soon to start calling Philly one of 2022's championship favorites. Stay tuned for all that and more. Right quick, only 12.2% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. A 10-time All-Star, 3-time scoring champion, and 2018's most valuable player, played his much-anticipated first game in Philly Threads. As the Beard's mission to add a championship ring to his long list of accomplishments began, James made headlines for stating that Philadelphia was always his number one choice in his trade demand out of Houston. Living up to the hype he stirred up, Skinny Harden immediately resembled his vintage MVP self. Taking Anthony Edwards out to the left corner for a tango, watch how Harden elusively sells drive to the basket with his strong hand, proceeding to explode out of a momentum crossover to his right, Euro stepping around Pat Bev for an and one, just a beautiful dribble combination. Combined with that beastly ISO ability, it's passes in transition from beyond half court that Philly's offense desperately missed without Ben Simmons. The Sixers ranked down at number 27 in pace. So Harden mercilessly pushing the ball in transition like he was all night in Minneapolis was a godsend for coach Doc Rivers. One factor that's become evidently scary with Philly, even after just one outing, is that with Harden handling the rock and Tobias Harris at the small ball four and five shooters on the floor at all time with Paul Millsap backing up Embiid, the Sixers floor spacing is absolutely ridiculous. Coach Doc Rivers and starting point guard Tyrese Maxey both expressed gratitude for now being the beneficiaries of Harden's patented step-back jumper, a shot which left them hopeless as opponents of the beard in the past. Rivers even touched on a specific play set the team found time to run over, saying, Tyrese on the strong side corner of James Isos, we worked on that this morning. If he fires it, it's a straight line drive for Maxey. He got there. Embiid had this to say on Harden, i really never been wide open like this in my life. Seriously. I mean, the passes, like I wasn't even expecting it, and it was just coming. That's what he does. He's going to make the game easy, whether it's for me or my teammates too. Meanwhile, the man of the hour, James Harden, had this to say, Just let the game come to me. I'm very good at that. I can be a playmaker. I can be a scorer. Just take the shots when I need to. A great sign for Philly fans is that Harden also said that his left hamstring is feeling completely better. The 21-year-old sophomore in Tyrese Maxey purely detailed the amount of pressure the beer takes off him and other players in the Sixers lineup, saying, I mean, just being a fan of basketball, I've watched James for a long time now since I was young, of course. Just watching the defense pay so much attention to him when he's dribbling because he's dangerous, even your man, no matter who you are, is paying attention. The fact that Philadelphia held on to Maxey in the Harden deal was fairly sensational work from both team president Daryl Morey and general manager Elton Brand. Still, there were media members questioning how the shot-creating guard would fit next to Harden in more of an off-ball role. Friday night, though, saw Mad Max respond to those doubters as on an incredibly efficient 12 for 16 shooting night, man poured in 28 points with Harden dropping dimes to him flying down court multiple times for buckets on the fly in transition. Coach Doc Rivers has always been a scoring-minded coach. Doc's most valuable coaching trait has been his ability to get his players to execute plays within the structure of a cohesive style. In only Harden's first game, whether it was utilizing an Iverson cut, a dribble handoff from the corner, or screening for Ty Reese in a point shooting guard pick and roll, Harden was thriving off typical play sets within Philadelphia's offensive system. Luckily for Doc, his task of assembling an attack offensively is now much easier with the beard. Philly's offense against Minnesota was dominant, and James swung momentum in multiple ways, putting evidence on tape that he's prepared to adjust his playing style to Embiid's. 
It was invigorating to witness Harden skirt around the perimeter and come off handoffs from Joel, among others. Before the trade when Seth Curry graced the lineup, it was those handoff actions that became a go-to weapon for Philadelphia. It was their most effective play outside of throwing the ball to Embiid on the block. Harden's much more dynamic of an offensive talent than Seth, so running that play should give the Sixers open look after open look. The beard not only has to be accounted for both as a shooter and driver, but it takes intricate game planning to stop those aspects of his game. Combine that with the fact that Embiid can't be left alone anywhere inside the arc, and that makes it scary hour in the city of brotherly love. On a ton of possessions, handoffs resulted in either Harden putting a defender on his hip and breaking down the defense, or springing open for a triple. As he spoke on himself, the extra attention on Harden makes life night and day way easier for Tyrese Maxey. Assuming Harden keeps the rock moving and running two-man sets with Embiid, the defense tilts towards the two superstars' direction, which allows Maxey much clearer driving lanes than he's ever had. Defensively against the T-Wolves, Philadelphia showed off some prominence as well. Instead of individually guarding Carl Anthony Towns straight up, Embiid played a safety type role, roaming to multiple spots on the floor, allowing the Sixers to switch off the ball for most of the game. Minnesota, who's had a great season in their own right, quite simply didn't have the personnel to get what they wanted against Harden and Embiid in the pick and roll. While Joel's an exceptional rim protector and known as a great all-around defender, Forcing James to fight through screens without the ability to switch is likely going to be the way most teams attempt to expose Philadelphia. Minnesota wasn't even close to slowing down the combination on Friday though. Philly's off-ball switching was a really nice strategy because Embiid almost exclusively thrives guarding in drop coverages. Heading into the game, if you were wondering about whether or not Doc Rivers would stagger his stars, keeping one of them on the floor at all times, the man in charge delivered on letting each of his big names get their own time to cook. James came out early in the first, and then, when Embiid went to the pine, the beard started saucing up again, anchoring some second unit lineups along with Tobias Harris for a long stretch in the opening half. Harden's thrived in this model during his days in Houston and Brooklyn, specifically with Chris Paul during their time together with the Rockets. Rivers' willingness to go that route early in the game is a positive sign for the rotation moving forward. In his first game in Sixer Threads, James taught a mix of players what it's like to execute offense in his style. Harden's lessons specifically hit home with Embiid, as the process is picturing an upcoming playoff run where Doc and the rest of his teammates along with Sixer fans need him to be less than perfect to win big. Out of everything we've went over, if there's one thing you can positively take from Embiid's first game, it's the body language and interactions between James and Joel. After Harden's first bucket, a driving three-point play, he walked back on D and let Minnesota's bench hear his approval. After a Harden step back three, Embiid looked at him with a huge smile and gave him a chest bump. And after Harden set Embiid up for an easy hoop off a dribble handoff, the two high-fived in the paint. Harden's already passed Ben Simmons in all-time three-pointers made from a Sixer player. Having said that, in his Houston Rocket and Brooklyn Nets debuts, the beard also exploded for incredible showings. Man knows how to make a first impression, but if Philly wants any chance at finally completing the process by hanging a championship banner at Wells Fargo, James will have to drop the type of performances we saw on Friday night on a regular basis. How would you describe M. Beard's debut? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Irvin Alexar Guerra, who says getting Tristan Thompson means a lot for Chi Town. Even though he isn't the same as his 2016 self, he's a valuable big with grit, energy, and toughness which the Bulls desperately need off the bench. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.